could all guess what season of the year this is. It's springtime, of course, and the inhabitants of the zoo are beginning to wake up. And they've started to look round. And some have already got that spring feeling. Animals from warm countries, like the fennec foxes, whose home is in the Sahara, wonder when, if ever, it will be warm again. Next door, Peter, the cheetah, overheard something about spring in the air. Spring in the air, he said indignantly. Why should I? It's too cold to move out of the straw. The monkeys all huddled together to keep warm. And the wise ones are settling down to sleep until it's really spring weather. On the other hand, Sam and Lizzie already find the sunshine so warm that they feel too limp to move. The musk ox is rather fretful because he's much too hot in this heavy coat, while his wife, frisking in the next door paddock, is leaving off her winter woolies in large tufts. But even she's too warmly dressed to keep up the pace. The buffaloes are casting off clouts too, looking in the process rather like moth-eaten hearth rugs. In the opposite paddock, the wapiti is leaving off his coat and growing his summer headdress of horns at the same time. In a couple of weeks, they have grown quite a lot. And at the end of six weeks, he looks top heavy, but handsome. The python casts his winter coat too, beginning round his mouth. And his one-piece garment comes off his eyes as well. He uses a rough tree trunk as an aid to, to wriggling out of his suit. The new coat is beautifully bright and shiny, but getting rid of the old one has been such an effort that he has to stop and rest a bit, just at the tail end. There's one place in the gardens where it's always spring cleaning time, and that's the monkey hill. has a careful manicure to get ready for the new season. Some I inhabitants of the zoo are wearing the latest spring woolies for infants. 
Little black swans wear khaki colour. The baby sea lion ha has a shiny, tight-fitting bathing suit. Being too young to take fish dinner like the other sea lions, he takes a nap instead. The little yak is dressed in a black woolly coat. He is a particularly good baby, but with such a very severe mother and father, who would dare be otherwise? But the baby camel is always up to pranks because he has only mother to look after him and she's rather shabby and absent-minded. He dearly loves trying to bite the shiny buttons off the keeper's uniform. The young puma has a spotted woolly vest. And his cousin, the lion cub, wears speckles too. That's what he thinks of you. Perhaps the birds are the best dressed inhabitants of the zoo when it's a question of spring clothes. The peacock wears his train to go courting in with good effect. For the lady is evidently impressed. The Amherst pheasant is also rather a dandy. He wears a white ruff, which he can spread out like a fan. This particular lady, however, is not at all impressed by his spring suit. And in vain does he cry, wait a minute, I've got something to tell you. The damosel cranes, in their new grey plumage, begin to practice their famous spring dance. An admirer has sent Jimmy and Bobo some new spring millinery. Bobo has chosen a neat gents boater. But at first, Jimmy was inclined to change his Paris model for something less sporting. On second thoughts, however, he has decided to keep it, as it is most becoming worn at the right angle. But which exactly is the right angle? Springtime, and in the garden there is only one sad sight. There's one lovebird sitting all alone, although it is springtime at the zoo.